So I'm super excited to share with you my latest project. This one is an AI generated clock. I call it the clock house, a combination of a clock, what it does, and Bob Earls, the painter. And this clock generates a new AI image every 20 seconds, incorporating the hands of the clock within the environment of the image itself. And every single image is unique. And all of that runs on a piece of hardware the size of a Raspberry Pi that costs $250. This is the Jetson Orin Nano Super, and it's essentially a supercomputer, AI supercomputer, the size of a Raspberry Pi. Pretty impressive for a tiny little uh, device and a super impressive and fun project. I'm gonna show how I made it, how it works step by step, and how you can make your own clock like that if you want to. Let's get started. If you want to make your own clock like that, all you need is essentially three components, right? Jetson Orin Nano Super, a seven inch LCD screen. And because the Jetson runs on a DisplayPort and not an HDMI, uh, you need a DisplayPort to HDMI cable to connect the screen. That's it. The screen doesn't need power. All the links to all the devices are in the description below. One of the coolest things about this project is that it runs fully local on the device, so nothing runs in the cloud, there's no API cost, there's no doesn't ping home, nothing. It runs at 15 watts per hour, so kind of essentially like a light bulb, and does all of that uh, on the device itself. And the crazy part is that no two images are the same, all of them are unique, and since I built this project and I have it here in my living room, Every time I walk by, I stop to see how does my clock look like now? Which is, you know, when was the last time you looked at the clock wondering how it looks like and not what is the time? To set up your own clockers, you need to flash a microSD with the latest NVIDIA Jetpack and insert it into the Jetson Nano. Then install the NVIDIA operating system with all defaults. Just keep in mind that the hostname and username needs to be clockers and you do need internet for the setup process itself. Once this is done, launch the terminal and type curl il https bit.ly slash clockers hyphen setup pipe sudo bash. The script will ask you for your password and then start a setup process that will take about 20 minutes to download the models, change the system environment and uh, make sure that clockers starts at system boot. The first launch will take a bit longer, but here we are with the first image being generated. And you know, everybody will tell you don't run a bash script without understanding what it does. So you have in the description the link to the bash script so you can see exactly what it does. Clockhouse here has also a touchscreen interface, so you can tap on it. And then you get a menu where you can choose different display modes. You can uh, control the contrast of the rendering and which specific checkpoint or image generation model to use and then you can choose between different styles. I have a bunch of styles here, like cinematic, digital art, painting, photo, anime, and even pixel art. I love pixel art images. Uh, well, not generally, but on this clock. And um, you have a button to save a snapshot. So basically save a screenshot if you want to show it with somebody. If you end up having a really cool uh, picture on the clock, show it with me. On top of that, it uses GPT-2 to actually generate the different prompts, and we're gonna show you uh, the whole step-by-step. -step. The project is also fully open source, so we can see the code and everything uh, behind it. The way this project works is that it uses st um, Stable Diffusion 1.5, and the reason why I use 1.5 is to fit it on uh, a smaller, weaker device and do it quickly enough. So essentially the generation of each image like that takes 11 seconds. Why do I update it every 20 seconds? Well, because of all the things uh, that are happening around it and uh, we'll get to that. How does this clock images are even generated, right? So I've created a little bit of a tutorial here to show step-by-step step how that whole system works. If you're not familiar with Colab, it's a combination of a notebook text editor and a remote computer. So basically like a server in Google's data center that you can write code in and execute immediately. Very similar to Jupyter Notebook, but running within Google's infrastructure. So I'm gonna set up the environment here, all the requirements, that will take a few minutes. A few minutes later. Stable Diffusion is an image generation model, as the name implies. 
It uses Diffusion to generate images using AI or essentially machine learning. Stable Diffusion is an open source. It was released by the company Stability AI. The beauty of it being open source is that you can customize it and use it for all kind of different use cases. And you can run it on your own computer, in the cloud or on the Jetson Nano as we do here. There's a few different in-user interfaces or different tools to kind of run Stable Diffusion. One of the most common ones is called Automatic 1111, and that's an interface where you can give prompts and choose different models, basically control Stable Diffusion. Another one is called Comfy UI, which is basically a node-based system when you can take different nodes and connect them to generate images. What we're gonna be using today is diffusers, which is an open source library based on Stable Diffusion made by Hugging Face. I love this name, Hugging Face. I also like the whole name is actually an emoji of the Hugging Face. And the beauty of Diffuser is that it's a, a Python library that you can just load, run, and control with Python code. Let's uh, set up a Diffusion model here, and we're going to be using specifically this model called Rev Animated V2 Rebuild. I'm not going to go into all the details here, but if you do want me to go to do essentially a deep dive into diffusers and generating open source image generation, let me know. Once we load this, we can kind of see what model does by itself. Let's just give it an empty prompt and then it will just let its imagination, so to speak, run wild. And let's see what do we get. And those are the images we got. Most of them do not make much sense because they're basically like combined from pieces of images or pieces from its training model kind of makes sense but then they don't because there's absolutely no guidance that we gave the model of what we want to see and as i said before basically what diffusion does is it creates noise and from that noise it diffuses the image so every step it takes away some of the noise based on the training material it got until it arrives at an Decent image. So let's run Stable Diffusion step by step and see how that looks like. And here we got all the different steps of the image generation. And you can see that we start basically with pure noise and guided by the prompt that we gave, in this case, a beautiful landscape. We see how pieces of the landscape, like each cluster of the noise, is being diffused into something that the model imagines as a landscape. And as we get closer and closer here, there's less and less of the noise and a smoother image appears until we basically get full image, the clean image. Let's try this again. And here we have a dolphin riding the waves. Since we use an animated model, like a model that was trained on animation images, that's why it generates an animated image here. Now, Stable Diffusion has another whole set of tools on how to control the image generation. That is called ControlNet. So ControlNet has been trained on, on PERS, of illustrated or processed images and the resulting images. And now it can do basically the opposite of that. You can give it a like a sketch of an image and it can generate a picture with Stable Diffusion from it. And essentially it works like another layer similar to the prompt, another layer that guides the generation. Let's create a simple image, like a red circle on a blue background. And let's use that image as the control image for our generation, we still with a beautiful landscape as the pump. And you can see the influence of the circle, the blue circle and the red circle, when in the end we get an image generated on the red circle. We can, however, tell the model not to apply the circle on every step. And so we start here at 20%, like 0.2, and end at 0.5. So only between 20% of the generation till half of the generation, the image is going to be applied. And afterwards, the model can do whatever it wants without the control. And what we end up having is an image that basically has the circle in it, but it's a lot more free to generate what it wants. And you can see here, we kind of lost the red part or like it went away. But yet still, we see the form of the circle and the, the blue influence in the back. And it obviously started with more red in the front, but didn't continue and went slightly in a different uh, direction. And that's exactly what we're going to be using for the generation of the clock. So if instead of the circle, we generate an image of a clock that looks like this, now we can use that as a control image for the control net. Let's take the clock image and let's see what we get. And here we got a clock that uses light on the mountain as the hour clock. And all those marks around appear in the generated image as well. That's pretty cool. You'll notice that in 
many of the examples I have a negative prompt, which is basically says, well, what we don't want to see in the generated image. And in many of them, I put NSFW naked or nude. And that is because some stable diffusion models can be a little bit horny. This one is not too much, but better safe than sorry. Okay, all the images until now have been generated with a beautiful landscape. So essentially the same prompt. And that's what we got. But we want to have different images and kind of like we want them to look different. And so we start by generating prompts. So essentially what we do is we take different artistic styles, we take different mediums, different descriptions, and combine them for random prompts. So let's say a surrealist style photo of a forest. And that's how we got like these four prompts. An abstract style of pixel art, style pixel art of a landscape, a contemporary style, but it's really limited to what can we generate, what kind of prompts we'll get from this random generator. And that is why we're going to be using a version of GPT-2 trained on existing high quality prompts of images to enhance those basic prompts and kind of improve them. So we give them the, some guidance, but then we enhance them to have additional descriptors and additional parts of the prompt that we will be feeding into the stable diffusion model. You will notice that this model is actually very small. 500 megabytes is considered tiny. Many models are like many gigabytes or terabytes of data. And that's because GPT-2 is a very small and old model, but it's good enough for what we want to do. And to run very quickly on the all in nano because all we want to do is just to complete the sentence right so the model here completed it an abstract style photo of a city a city street a man is walking on the street the city is full of tall buildings the buildings are all different sizes and shapes and they all looking in different directions the city is full of color and you see that the prompt has been cut off but that's good enough for the image generation model and it's different enough that will get different styles of images every time. All right, so now that we have all of those pieces figured out, let's put it all together and get some clocks. And we have three different uh, times here, 1030, 345, 715. And basically for each one of those, we generate four images. So a surrealist style photo of a futuristic area. And you can see here the three, four different clocks. A surrealist style photo of a forest of giant mushrooms with giant glowing crystal in the center. Okay, so you see the forest here and basically the branches of the tree show the time, right? We're saying it's 3.45, so here's the three, here's 45. Here we see that it was turned into a waterfall and a river, very beautiful image here. And here like it turned part of the grass and a waterfall into the clock itself. This is how all the pieces of that clock work. All that's left to do is to build a piece of code out of it. For that, I'm going to cursor, creating a new a file called taskmd, an AI clock that uses this clock face. It the second hand. Okay. Then we go to the composer. What is missing from the description? Feel free to ask me questions and then update the tasks. Now that this is defined, we start a new comp composer and implement this project. Isn't that amazing that you can just implement the project, right? Okay, I'm not gonna walk to you to the whole generation in Cursor. If that is something that's interesting for you, let me know, I'll make a whole tutorial on how to use Cursor to generate such apps. But the final version of the project with configuration and so on, you can see in the link below. All right, that's it. Um, I hope you learned something from that video. I know that I sure did, especially on how to use stable diffusion, how stable diffusion works step by step, how to use it programmatically, efficiently, and AI on the edge, which is an interesting subject I definitely want to pursue more in the future. If you liked it, you learned from it, be sure to like this video. If you want to see more content like that uh, in the future, uh, be sure to subscribe. All the links for the hardware and the software are in the description. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to join our Discord. Me and the rest of our community will um, answer any questions you might have and help you out. If you wanna pre-order this clock a little bit more polished without building it yourself, leave your uh, contact information in the form below. And uh, until next time, I feel like making a video. Bye.